Okay, so I've received uh, well quite a few questions um, over SIG, or on Sigploit, and uh, specifically uh, in reference to the anytime interrogation, uh, which I've shown in the past, uh, both a client and a server set up for demonstration purposes on Dragon OS um, Focal for x64 uh, based uh, computers. Um, it was never pre-installed. Uh, I've shown how to install it. Uh, however, on the uh, Dragon OS Pi 64, which is uh, what you're looking at right now on the Raspberry Pi 4 and can be downloaded uh, from SourceForge, uh, the latest image being the Beta 7. You download it. It's a rather large file. You're going to unzip it. You're going to need at least a 16 gigabyte SD card. Uh, more like 32 gigabytes though because you're not going to really have any space free uh, which uh, I'll point out too if you do go download this to follow along one of the first things that you're going to want to do is run sudo raspi config you come down to advanced options expand the file system which I have already done you uh, finish and then uh, I'm not going to reboot now but when you reboot you'll get the uh, full uh, SD card so make sure you do that uh, on top of changing your user password which by default the user is Ubuntu and the password is Dragon which is on the SourceForge page so once you get in there change your username password um, you know probably reconfigure your SSH uh, I've dumped a note on the desktop uh, that just reminds you of these things as well as shares a few other tips okay anyways back to Sigploit which I have the github page pulled up here you can see telecom signa uh, signaling framework is what this is and I'll point out in this video which should be clear uh, it's not directly tied to software defined radios which is what I try to, to stick to in this case slightly different uh, but for um, I guess you'd say education research purposes you want to understand how this framework works this is a good tool uh, to check out uh, I am doing nothing outside of a local network here uh, so the server and client and everything that I'm doing is on the Pi itself uh, so that there's no confusion uh, as to what is uh, going on here and again it's for education and uh, nothing more than that uh, you want to read what else you can do with Sigploit uh, that's fine um, there's a page on github where you can read more about it and what it does and what else you can do with it okay so Sigploit is already installed on the Raspberry Pi and it is sitting in the user source Sigploit folder. Take a look around. Uh, there's some information in here, and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do the anytime interrogation again, and we should be able to just run uh, Python Sigploit because uh, this is using I think it's Python 2, which there's both 2 and 3 in Dragon OS Pi 64, and so we want to we'll get a menu that comes up like this we want to deal with SS7 so pick the zero we'll look at zero again and we'll look at a number three for the anytime interrogation alright so uh, let's see actually before we do anything let's stop this for a second there's one other thing that we need to do that is pretty important and so what we're going to do is set up two additional IP addresses here on the Pi and I'll show why here in a second should be dot 101 and dot 102 all right, and then we'll go back and start up our client side here. Again, zero, location, zero, and we'll pick anytime interrogation. 
Okay. Now the other important part is the server side of this. So again, and user source X or uh, Sigploit. We'll go into the testing folder, server attacks, and we'll look at location and anytime. And so if we take a look at the README instructions, you'll see where I'm getting these values from here. And then how to run it. So all we're going to do, and since this is sitting in the user source directory, we're going to go ahead and use sudo. We'll do java jar anytime interrogation and this should set up the server side so you can kind of see what it looks like when it's successfully starting you'll see something about no such file or directory but everything else should be initialized kind of set this off to the back here we can minimize this for now so the server's running in the background now you may find that you have to run this once or twice to get a result but we're going to go ahead and we're going to set some settings here on the left hand side. We're going to set both our client and server PC. Now this is where the additional IP addresses we added comes in. We're going to set those. Oops. Server port 2906. We'll set the network indicator at zero. We'll go ahead and throw a local GT in there. We'll just go four four one two three four five six seven eight nine zero. And then we'll set the target Oops. MSISDN, which in the example was uh, 96 599 All right, so now we have uh, all our settings set. Fingers crossed, uh, we should be able to run this. And again, you might have to run it a couple times, hopefully. We'll just get a success the first time here. And we're going to run, and this is going to uh, go out and initialize the stack here on this side. And we're going to give it a little bit. This is going to go out and query with the, you can see it on the right, the actions here, the SS7. And what we want is that location information to come back, which there we go. So. Uh, we can see the info and location, and you can read there what that is um, providing back in this closed demonstration here. Okay, so that was pretty quick. Uh, that's uh, about as easy as I can make it if you want to learn about this and try it out. Just a matter of downloading the DragonOS Pi 64 image, burning it on an SD card, and uh, and booting it up and following along here. So, all right. All right. Thank you.